So in this video, I'll be discussing on momentum and uh, how it leads to the Newton's second law of motion. Let's take a small bullet and of mass m. Suppose I have a small bullet of mass m. I pick it up with my hand and throw it at a wall. It goes and hits the wall with velocity v1. The same bullet of mass m, I fire it at the wall with a rifle with velocity v2. Obviously, v2 is much, much greater than v1. And the impact caused by m moving at v2 is much higher than the impact caused by m moving at mass m moving at v1. So, this product of mass and velocity, this product of mass and velocity is called momentum. So, momentum is a vector quantity represented by small p for linear momentum is a product of mass and velocity. So, how fast or how quickly the mass propels itself in some direction causes a different kind of impact in depending on the velocity. So, that is why momentum becomes an important factor of study. Now, if let us say we call this as case A where the bullet travels with velocity v1 and this is case B where bullet travels with velocity v2. If I need to stop the bullet which I threw with my hand, then the force required will be some amount let us say f. But the, at the same time if I need to stop the bullet which is fired from the rifle, then the force required would be huge. So, f capital F is much much greater than small f. So, if I want to stop the bullet instantly which is fired from a rifle, the force required is huge. Whereas, if I need to stop the bullet which I threw with my hand, the force required is smaller compared to the other case. So, how quickly I bring the object to a halt is also an important factor. Then. So, which means the rate at which the momentum changes from mv to 0, let us say it is an object is moving of mass m is moving at the velocity v and then I want to bring it to 0 momentum which means I want to bring the velocity to 0. Then if the mv was large initially, then the force required is also huge. So, the force required changes based on how quickly I want to change the momentum. Let us say the object is moving with momentum uh, of 5 and uh, if I want to bring it to a halt, then the force required will be lesser compared when its momentum is 10. So, these are the ideas I just wanted to lay as the background before we go ahead with uh, further discussion on momentum. Now, let us take the case of two masses. Let us say I have a small mass m and a capital mass which is represented by this block. Now, if let us say these two are at rest and I apply the same force, let us say f1 to object mass small m, the same f1 I apply to mass capital M, then this object with small m will gain some velocity v1 and the other one will gain a velocity v2. v1 will be greater than v2 because I am pushing the smaller mass with a force and the bigger mass with the same force. Obviously, the smaller mass will move faster and uh, have a velocity v1 which is greater than velocity v2 of the object m. But after time t, after time interval t seconds, if we observe m v1 and capital M v2, they both have gained the same momentum is what is observed. The momentum gain depends upon the force. So, though the objects are of different masses, momentum gained or the change in momentum depends upon the force. So, we saw in a case here that the rate of change of momentum or the momentum required, the force required to stop an object with bigger momentum is higher. So, there is a relation between force and momentum here. And here we have again seen that though the masses are different, the products of the velocities and the masses 
are the same which means the if the force applied is the same then the momentum is proportional to the force so but we know that momentum is a vector quantity so vector momentum is a vector quantity vector has magnitude and direction it has magnitude and direction both now we have seen we have an idea of how magnitude changes here but let's take the case of somebody holding a ball by a rope and it's being rotated around by a person it goes in circles in this particular direction let's say and the faster i want to rotate it the faster it has to be rotated or with more velocity then the force exerted by the person via this rope that is holding the ball needs to increase so again we see here even to change the direction in initially let's say let alone while rotating the ball will fly in this direction at the next instant the ball will change direction the linear momentum of the ball will change direction so to change direction also force is needed and how quickly it changes the direction depends upon this force exerted by the person holding it by other rope so we have clearly seen that momentum the rate of change of momentum depends upon the force be it direction or magnitude because it's a vector quantity depends upon the force so the rate of change of momentum let's say delta p is directly proportional to the by del p is directly proportional to the force applied so we can roughly say that the force is k times some constant times dp by dt which means the force is nothing but the differential or the rate of change of momentum multiplied by a constant and since this is the first derivation of this formula as a convention k is kept as 1 so this gives rise to f equals dp by dt force is nothing but rate of change of momentum so but we know that momentum is a product of mass and velocity so this gives d m as a constant so m dv by dt and rate of change of velocity we know is acceleration so what happens here is let me write this here the force is mass times rate of change of velocity which is nothing but acceleration and this is the second law of newton's second law of motion that f equals ma interestingly if we observe here when the acceleration is zero the force becomes zero that means an object continues to move in a uniform velocity then the force net force acting on it is zero so this f it's very important to note that this f is the external force internal forces should not be included in this it's an external force acting on any object is represented by this f and we can see that it is in line with the first law because for an object moving at rest or moving at constant velocity acceleration is zero and hence the external force is zero Thank you.